Okay. Good morning. We're going to go over FRQ4 this morning. Um, two carts colliding mid ramp. Um, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or just type in the chat, and we will make sure to cover those questions for you. Um, all right. So when you take the AP test, they're not going to put the title of the question generally on there. Would that be correct? So you're not going to see two carts colliding mid ramp. But obviously you get the picture. And if this was a question and I looked at this, I would see my diagram and I see that they're gonna be going um, colliding together. I initially would be thinking conservation of energy because I have objects going from, you know, on a ramp down to the bottom. And then, so conservation of energy is something I'm gonna look for there. And then with the collision, of course, we're gonna start thinking about conservation of momentum. Could there be some impulse, um, something along those lines? Those are the things that going through my mind as I just start to read what the problem is about. Okay, so we have cart A with a mass of capital M released from rest at a height of 2H, okay? So again, making sure that we see release from rest. So these are not moving at the top. On a ramp, making an angle of two theta with the horizontal as shown. Cart B has a mass of 2M and is released from rest at a height of h on a ramp, making an angle of theta. The carts roll towards each other, have a head-on collision on the horizontal portion of the ramp, so we're looking at right there, and stick together, okay? So here, I'm gonna start to think, maybe make a note about inelastic. So what I know about an inelastic collision is that momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not conserved. The masses of the cart's wheels are negligible and any as are any frictional or drag forces. Okay, so our first question here is indicate whether the cars remain at rest, move to the left or move to the right after your collision and explain how you arrived at your answer. Okay, this actually involves a lot of work to get your answer here. Um, I'm gonna see if I can start up in this part of my paper, and then I might move it to the bottom if I'm going on um, and it's not fitting well on there. So what I'm gonna start with is looking at, again, as the cars go down, they're, I'm going to apply law of conservation of energy, and then they're going to have a collision. And I can use that collision of the initial momentum of each cart, cart A and cart B, and then look at their momentum after the collision, okay, when they are combined and stuck together. And then if I can find the velocity after the collision, it's going to tell me if they're going to remain at rest, if the velocity happens to be zero, move to the left, which is our negative direction, or move to the right, which would be the positive direction that I'm going to set up in my problem. Okay. So as I start with cart A, okay, and look at my conservation of energy for cart A, so I'm going to have... Can I jump in? Yeah. One of the things that people, when we've done this problem in the past, that's, that's just the wrong approach completely, is somehow combining cart A and cart B into one law of conservation of energy problem. So they'll do like the gravitational energy of A, of Earth for A, plus gravitational energy of Earth for B, plus kinetic energy of A, plus kinetic energy of B. Bad. One, yeah. yeah. They, they're both rolling down independently of each other. So don't combine those energy stuff, those energy ideas together. Okay. That'll be, we get to momentum. So first for cart A, If I have the sum of my energy initial is going to equal the sum of my energy at the bottom, right before the collision. So at the top, I'm going to have gravitational potential energy, which we know MGH. But let me look at my factors here. So M for cart A is capital M, G, but then this one is 2H. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in here. 
It's at rest, so there's no kinetic energy. At the bottom of my ramp, I'm gonna make that my zero point here. So I'm going to have my energy all converted to kinetic energy here. So that's going to be one half mass of this car is capital M. And then I have V, I'm gonna put it for car A squared. Okay. As I go to figure out what is going to be that velocity of my car at the bottom, I can start to, see I can cancel out M and then I can move the one half over. So I'm going to have two G H equals the velocity of cart A squared at the bottom. This is right before the collision. So that's going to give me, whoops, I did that wrong. Hold on, I apologize. That is a four as I multiply that over. So when I take the square root of this, I'm gonna get two root GH equals the velocity for cart A at the bottom, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do is just get those and then I can go into the collision part when I know the velocities at the bottom right before they collide. Okay, so then I'm going to look at cart B, okay? So for right now, let me just take this and put that there. And again, the sum of my energy for cart B initial is going to equal the sum of the energy when it's at the bottom there. Now for this cart, it's going to be, again, it's at rest, so gravitational potential energy, MGH, but this is 2MGH, okay? And at the bottom, then I'll have kinetic energy, one half, but I'm going to put in 2M for my mass, and then it's a velocity of cart B squared. Okay, now this time, I'm going to, as I look at my algebra, can cancel those out. So I'm gonna have two GH is equal to VB squared. And so therefore I have two GH equals velocity of B at the bottom, okay? So the two carts do start with the same amount of mechanical energy, two MGH initially. At the bottom, they will have the same amount of kinetic energy. But when we specifically look at the velocity that they'll each have at the bottom, they are going to be different. And so that's gonna factor into when we start to look at the collision part of the problem and the conservation of momentum. Okay. So again, what I did to start is use conservation of energy to determine the velocities at the bottom of the ramp right before the collision. So now what I'm going to do is analyze the collision part. Okay, so, cause I need a little room on these problems here, they did not give you much. So I'm going to move this down to the bottom. All right, then for the collision part, I'm going to have cart A is going to the left, or I'm sorry, to the right. So I'm gonna have for this for The mass of cart A, which let me go back, is M. And then for the velocity of cart A, MVA, minus MVB, but this is a two because it has twice as much mass. Now I'm putting a negative here because this cart is moving to the left. And so that's moving in my negative direction. And remember that momentum does have direction. This will equal 
m plus 2m, and then the velocity after the collision, which is what we're looking to solve for to find the direction of that velocity after the collision. So now if I substitute in my velocities for A and B into my equation for right before the collision, I'm going to get M times two root G H minus two M root two G H equals three M VF. Okay, so I am going to just kind of rearrange this algebraically. So if I have 2m And I'm going to divide this by 3m. Okay, I can pull the m out and divide by m. So I'm essentially getting here, if I go down, 2 root gh minus 2 root 2 gh over three. And we can see that this will give you a negative value for the velocity because this quantity is greater than just two root GH. So where they give you, if you plug this into the calculator to get a number, you will get this equal to negative 0 0.28 square root of GH. And therefore, the moment, the direction after the collision will be to the left. Okay. When we look at the rubric for grading this, and this is a lot, so I did mine algebraically. A lot of this could have been done, um, it does give some points for just explaining some stuff, but any application of conservation of energy is what they're looking for. So again, using that conservation of energy at the beginning for cart A at the top of the ramp at rest to at the bottom of the ramp right before the collision. And for cart B, again, at the top of the ramp at rest to at the bottom of the ramp right before the collision. And applying it correctly, you get another point. So just using conservation of energy at all, which we would hope you would, one point, doing it correctly, another point, and then applying the conservation of momentum for the collision to determine that the velocity after the collision would be in the negative direction. So we would go back to our answer and say, move to the left. Okay, any questions there? So when it says um, explain how you arrived to your answer, you mm -hmm. could just use like algebra, right, for that? Yes. For next one? Yeah. Okay. So all of my, yeah, what I have here, you can see here's their answers as they go through and that's what they're showing. So certainly you could explain um, quickly in one sentence using the law of conservation of energy. I can determine this and then go through and do that all algebraically here. Okay. Great. All right, then part B is consider the time interval from when the two carts are released until just after they collide. Okay, this is important here just after they collide. Again, when I read these problems, again, I want you to be an active reader. So be underlining things on your paper, um, making little notes. It's just gonna help you as you analyze the problem. So the first question for the system consisting of two carts in the earth, whenever I see that, again, I am underlining that, two carts and the earth. Indicate whether the total mechanical energy increases, decreases, or remains the same. Now the total mechanical energy here is going to be, we're using gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy for the two cart earth system from when they're released until just after they collide. All right, at the beginning, when they are released, 
the earth has the gravitational potential energy for the system as they roll down the hill to right before they collide that will be then kinetic energy the energy is transferred to kinetic energy of the carts but the total energy of the system at that point is still the same after the collision however because this is an inelastic collision and mechanical energy will be lost through the collision the total energy of the two cart earth system will decrease Okay, if this problem said just before they collide, then we would be looking at remains the same, but it says just after they collide. So you have to apply um, what you know about an inelastic collision and the loss of mechanical energy through that process. Okay, so for our rubric for that part, we have one point is earned in your explanation for indicating that no energy is gained as the carts move down the ramp or using the reasoning in part A regarding the energy for this part of the motion. So stating that from the beginning when they're at rest to right before they collide, no mechanical energy is lost. However, after the collision, mechanical energy is lost through the collision. And so the final energy after the collision will be less than the total energy before and at the top of the ramp. And then the last question is part B, I, I, for the system consisting of only the two carts, indicate whether the total mechanical energy increases, decreases, or remains the same. Now my system is only the two carts. So the energy that they start with at the top of the ramp of just the cart alone is going to be zero because they are at rest. Okay. Remember in part I, we had the earth in the system and the earth was holding, um, had the gravitational potential energy in part, the second part here, I, I, the system is only the two carts. So since the carts are at rest, they have zero mechanical energy at the start. As they roll down the hill, their mechanical energy increases because they go from no velocity to having a velocity. But then again, we have to look at it for after they collide. And since I derived from part A that they will have momentum to the left after the collision, their mechanical energy for the whole process of starting at rest, rolling down the hill, colliding, and then after the collision, it will increase. Okay, so as we look here, we have for part two, indicating that the initial mechanical energy of the carts is zero. Okay, so in your whole explanation, Need to, so here's an example. When the carts are released, they have no mechanical energy since they are not moving. After the collision, the carts have kinetic energy. Um, and you can even refer back to your answer for part A. So the total mechanical energy of the cart cart system increases. Now there's an alternate solution here for identifying gravitational force as the only external force doing the work. It's an external force here because the earth is not in your system. And then you could use the work kinetic energy theorem. Um, as they show. Anything to add Mr. Schramm? You're good. Nope. Any questions, guys? Sorry there. For part A, do we have to like explain algebraically or just sentences? Um, I think that, so here's example one for part A. If we look at the, what I have on the screen here, 
the contributions of each cart to the potential energy of the cart earth system when the carts are at their point of release are the same because one has twice the height and one has twice the mass of the other. Again, you shouldn't be using the angle here of theta. That doesn't come into play. We're just looking at the straight vertical height as we're doing this. So all this potential energy is converted into kinetic energy when the cars reach the bottom of the ramp. So the carts have the same kinetic energy there. This means that the speed of cart A is 1.4 times the speed of cart B. So I think to get to this here though, I personally would have to write down some of the formulas and in my head, I would not be getting to 1.4 times the speed. I would have to do a little bit of this work here to figure it out. But this whole part, these sentences right here can count for, you know, these points. Um, so this means that the speed of the cart of A is 1.4 times the speed of cart B. Before the collision, the cart A has a momentum of 1.4 mv to the right, and cart B has a momentum of 2 mv to the left, and the net momentum then is to the left. So after the collision, the carts will move to the left. So that is how they did it without using the algebraic um, answer. Um, but again, personally, I like to write all that down. I have a hard time just getting to some of those numbers, just thinking it in my head. Okay, thank you. Of course. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to pause the recording.